I'm Lena Rao. Welcome to Ask a VC, where we put VCs in the hot seat. Today, we're joined by Dave Zilberman of Comcast Ventures. Dave, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, I want to go into your bio. Uh, you joined Comcast Ventures in 2006. You focus on enterprise IT and digital media investments, and you've backed DocuSign, CTI Towers, Divide, and Vox Media. Prior to joining Comcast, you were a business development manager at um, Flarion Technologies, which was acquired by Qualcomm, among other movements in your career. Um, really excited to have you here. Uh, I, obviously, enterprise is, is going to be big in 2014. We've just seen uh, you know these amazing companies mm -hmm. sort of come and mature, like Box and Dropbox and and so on. Um, storage st storage companies as well. Um, I'm really curious. You know, you focus on some of this the 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 larger companies adopting these enterprise software products. And it seems like a few years ago that just wasn't happening. But now it's starting to happen and we're kind of at an inflection point. What do you sort of see as pushing more enterprises and companies into adopting software as a service? Yeah, I, I, I think that's a, that's a great question. We're seeing a tremendous shift in the way that businesses are managing their internal processes. And, and we saw software as a service based companies be very successful at the mid and low end of the market for small businesses. And we're now seeing larger enterprises embrace next generation business process management solutions. And in the way that enterprise software has been sold and adopted is fundamentally changing for large enterprises. And we're seeing quite a bit of that adoption happening at the large enterprise level. And so that's en encouraging for us to move it in aggressively into that space. I mean, is it, is it the security, you know, have like, have software as a service companies increase their security capabilities, so that's why these large enterprises actually feel like comfortable with them, with yeah, that? Yeah, I think there are, there are a few points to that. One, it's a reliability aspect of it. Um, software as a service based solutions delivered over a public cloud environment like an Amazon Web Services doesn't necessarily address the reliability requirements of a large enterprise for mission critical applications. As enterprise software companies are moving into higher tier data centers with, uh, with higher uptimes, um, as we've seen with DocuSign, those solutions are now uh, relevant to large enterprises mm -hmm. and are of interest, whereas the downtime for some of these enterprise software companies is going down dramatically, and so large companies are much more comfortable. Security is of critical importance. If confidential data is moving into a cloud environment, the businesses need to be assured that that content is secure. So I think it's the reliability and the security aspect of it that reinforce that interest. How far away are we from like the Fortune 100, you know, being completely reliant on the cloud and software as a service for their business processes? You know, we're, we're seeing even Fortune 50 companies aggressively move into cloud-based environments. I don't think we'll ever get to a point that they're entirely reliant on it. There are some data sets, there are some applications that will, in my opinion, never be able to move into a public environment. But I do envision a world in the not too distant future where the majority of applications could reside in a cloud environment, whether that's mm -hmm. public cloud, private cloud, or a hybrid solution that we're seeing quite a bit of interest in right now. Well, that's good news for any enterprise yeah. entrepreneurs who are considering cool. founding companies. Um, I want to go into some of our reader questions. Uh, this one kind of involves the whole corporate VC structure, mm -hmm. so bear with me, it's a little bit of a longer question. Okay. Imagine a large holding uh, company with several business branches, so for example, logistics, construction, energy, production. Should its board of advisors, um, and, or sorry, board of directors create a venture fund that's looking for M&A to strengthen its portfolio companies, or is it useful to have a separate fund that, that has its own financials not strictly tied to a corporation business like a Google Ventures or a Comcast Ventures? Right. So I, I think both of those initiatives are of critical importance, but I do think they're entirely, they should be entirely independent. M&A is very tactical, whereas venture is much more strategic in nature. And so our fund is entirely financially oriented, so we make investments based on financial return. Um, and we believe that the companies that we invest in with financial uh, merit have a higher likelihood of becoming more relevant and beneficial back to Comcast and NBC Universal rather than making an investment in the absence of financial merit. So I think both are, are very viable, but in order, in our opinion, for the, for the venture initiative to be successful, it needs to be financially oriented and deals need to be evaluated through a traditional cash on cash model as venture funds evaluate deals. Yeah, and so has there ever been an instance where you guys have invested in something and then Comcast has actually bought it? Or, you know, like for example, Google and Nest? Yeah, you know? th there have, they're, they're few and far between. Right. We don't invest 
in order for the company to be acquired by Comcast. Right. We have had in our history two companies acquired out of 150, however, that we've invested. So we're not investing with the expectation that Comcast will acquire. When's the right sort of moment for a company to create a venture arm? You know, like it, 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 it you know, Google has done it, mm -hmm. you guys have done it, um, SAP, you know, there's a few other, uh, American Express has their, sure. one, their own, um, you know, but, you know, Facebook hasn't done it and Apple hasn't done it. And, and you wonder, like, is that move strategic? What, when is it right and when is it, does it make sense? I don't think there's necessarily a right and a wrong time. Mm -hmm. I think for ourselves and Google and SAP and Amex and some others that you mentioned, it's about remaining at the leading edge of, of technology, embracing new technologies, solutions that may not be tactical, may be strategic longer term. Mm -hmm. So for us or for others in the corporate venture model, um, we're investing in forward-looking technologies that may be interesting and relevant down the road, and in the interim, looking at them for financial return. So from a Comcast perspective, they have a a venture fund for financial return, but also to gain greater visibility into emerging technologies and businesses. So it's that dual objective that we feel is, is really ideal. And also there's interesting alliances that can be created, right? Just because you're Comcast. So for you know, like the Body Media, exactly. Biggest Loser, you know, partnership. Yeah, in, you know, and that's, that's what I think is really unique about our model is that Comcast and NBC Universal are so diverse in their business operations. We invest in companies that we believe we could help advantage through the platform of Comcast and NBC Universal. And it's a mutually beneficial engagement because Comcast and NBC benefit from leading edge technologies, the entrepreneurs benefit by gaining access to an enormous platform on the cable side of Comcast, the broadcast side, the the uh, the movie production side of, of NBC. So it's a it's a really symbiotic relationship, and we we've been quite successful at identifying those. It's never guaranteed that we will be able to bring Comcast and NBC along as a partner, uh, but more often than not, we are able to deliver on that. Um, well, I want to go into another one of our uh, reader questions. Um, what do you see as some of the biggest pain points for mobile enterprise in the U.S. and what, you know, how do you sort of see startups alleviating that pain, that those problems? I mean, it's an interesting question because you know, yeah. you're really seeing a shift in workers carrying their personal devices mm -hmm. and accessing data, company data, even here at TechCrunch, you know, right. like accessing our email from sure. personal devices. So how do companies really solve that problem? problem and pain point? So I, I think it's a non-trivial problem to solve. We talked about enterprise and, and how uh, massive that shift is, and mobile is clearly uh, a very significant shift. And so as the two come together, there are a number of aspects to it. Security is of critical importance. Wireless devices traverse data over public networks, over potentially Wi-Fi and unsecured networks. So security is of critical importance. But also just the form factor itself, designing uh, enterprise software in a way that's accessible through a mobile device on a four-inch screen versus an 18-inch screen on a, on a computer uh, requires a lot of customization, a lot of UI design that we believe is of critical importance, but also making it usable by the enterprise employees. So we're investors in Divide, and they're very, very focused on ensuring that those enterprise applications have that consumer feel and perspective that we all as consumers have embraced. And so when we move into an enterprise environment, we expect that same type of experience. Um, so it, it, Yeah, it, that's like the whole consumerization of the enterprise, right? Exactly. I mean, that's just shifting the landscape completely. Exactly. How is that changing it on mobile, though? I mean, yeah, so now it's a bring your own device world, but in terms of the interactions you have, you know, with some of this, you know, with your corporate, mm -hmm. the, your corporate information, does it mean that, you know, you have a different authentic authentication. What's sort of your perspective on that? Yeah, security is of critical importance. Yeah. We we just saw the VMware acquisition That's of right, AirWatch. Air um, they're clearly making a very big move into mobile. We've seen IBM. We've seen other yeah. large corporations make acquisitions in mobile. So security and management is of critical importance. And BYOD, if I bring my own device into the environment, how does the enterprise ensure that that content is safe, secure? and then doesn't leave with me if I leave the organization. So that's actually a very complicated problem to solve. And then you also have a very diverse universe of mobile devices. So w whether it be iOS that's devices right. or the- Windows or- Or Android Blackboard. and even with Android. Some people are still using Blackberry. Some people are still <laughs> yeah. using Blackberry. Yeah. So for an enterprise, they can't limit the devices that employees bring if they truly embrace BYOD. So that takes on yet another complication. 
And in order for it all to survive, all of these various pieces, from design to security to usability, all need to come together. So it's a non-trivial problem, but we're seeing great strides being made in that category. We're very excited by mobile enterprise. Awesome. Well, Dave, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me.